Upland has just dropped their quarter four roadmap update, and it's very exciting. Roadmaps are always a good time. They're always exciting because you get to see how the team is thinking, how the development is coming along for Upland, and what the most pressing items are for the Upland team for the upcoming quarter. So today's video, we're going to actually go over this roadmap. We're just taking this general overview. We're going to highlight some of the items. We're not going to highlight all of the items. So you're going to want to make sure you head over to our Medium page. We also posted this on our Twitter uh, articles over on our Twitter page. You can go see it there. Um, but make sure you go read the full roadmap update because you're not going to want to miss anything here. There's a lot in this update. Go check it out. Get to know it. Live it. Love it read it and understand it. Um, so in this update, there were two things that we're focusing on or not this, not in the update, but we talked about two things that we're focusing on for quarter four. The first is a major is major user acquisition projects. So what is that? These are projects that we're not yet talking about. We're not sharing with you. We'll have more info as we get ready to release these, but we're working on them behind the scenes. These are projects that will enable us to onboard more users onboard the world to Upland and and bring Upland to the world. That's what the focus of these projects are. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. I can't wait to share more of this with you guys, but more details will be coming in quarter one of 2025. At least that's the plan so far. So stay tuned for those announcements. The other thing that we're working on this quarter is addressing a lot of, or some of rather, the community feedback that we've received. So for, for you guys that don't know, we actually have a feedback board. This is it right here. It's uplandfeedback.nolt.io. You can go to our webpage at the bottom, hit feedback if you don't remember that, and leave us feedback here. This feedback gets reviewed regularly. This feedback gets reviewed uh, weekly to bi-weekly and um, gets passed up to the team. It gets archived. It's a great way for you to leave feedback to us. Hey, what is, what is working for you? What is not working for you? What would you like to see? Go and lead that, leave that on our feedback page for us. Another thing that we did in this roadmap update is categorize how we think about items when we develop them. So we have three Three categories for items. We have larger projects. These take eight to 10 weeks to develop. We have medium projects. These take four to six weeks. And we have smaller projects. These projects take less than a month. So as we continue to work on these projects, you know, larger projects off obviously are going to take a little longer. Smaller projects, you're going to see those coming out sooner. Rollouts of each of these items will happen continuously, but these are our most immediate focus here. And then this is in no particular order. So we have these through by category. So the first category that we talk about in this Upland roadmap is sparklet utility. And there's two items here. I'm going to focus on the first one. Um, make sure you go again, make sure you go read the entire roadmap and go over everything in detail. But it's traveling with sparklet. What does that mean? Well, we've talked about this a while ago. We're going to start to implement it. That is your car will require sparklet in order to travel. It brings more utility to sparklet uh, and just makes traveling much more in depth and sophisticated and mature. So stay tuned for that. It will also so it'll start with cars and then it will also apply to airplanes and any other vehicle travel that comes in the future. Sparklet is the energy that will power your transportation. We then go to our next, so that's the sparklet category. Again, there's other items in that sparklet category. Go make sure you read the whole Upland update. The Upland update, no, this is a roadmap update. Uh, the next category is transportation and travel. And there's two things that I really wanna focus here. The first is the simplified travel experience. So we know that traveling is confusing, particularly for new players. But even us, as we play the game, when you're on the East Coast, you know what I'm talking about. You're on the East Coast, you're trying to figure out how to go from point A to point B, but there's all these cities in between and you don't know, where's the city with my bus station? Where do I need to go? I can't get there. It says it's out of, it's out of the boundaries of the city. I can't do it. We want to simplify that. And that's uh, this simplified travel experience. So I'm just going to read what it is here. Travel fees will remain the same, but journeys will be initiated in one single click. So imagine you're in, I don't know, let's say Porto and you want to go to L.A., You'll be able to map that out and say, hey, here's, here's where I'm at. Here's where I want to go. You'll be able to do it with one click and it will calculate all the fees for you in between, all the destinations for you in between. And then your 
your time and your block explorer will will begin to travel. Sorry, not your time. Your block explorer will begin to travel and your timer will count down for the total travel. So you won't need to log back in in like an hour once I hit New York and then from New York, I got to go here. You'll just be able to do it once. Single click for travel. This will really help out travel for, for new players especially, but for everybody. It's, it's a big convenience uh, feature there. The other thing that I want to focus on here, uh, and there's multiple items here. There's, what is there? One, two, three, four. There's four items under travel and transportation. So make sure you go check them out. But car rentals. What? That's right. Car rentals. Imagine being able to go to a Speedway Met Adventure. You don't have a car for a certain race, or maybe you do have a car, but this car is not going to be able to compete with the tier ones or with stock car. And I, I just, I want to be able to participate or maybe I don't want to buy a car, but I do want to do racing with, for the seasonal racing, or there's a one week event here that I want to participate in, or I just want to check it out. You'll be able to rent cars from Speedway MetaVenture owners for the race. This is, this is great for both uh, Speedway owners, for car owners and for players without cars really, I think helps mature uh, vehicles, racing, all in one one loop there. So that's very exciting. Again, there's more items here in the transportation and travel. Make sure you go check it out. Next up, the next category that we're thinking about in this roadmap that we're focused on is property features. And there's a big one. There's an elephant in the room, and that is property search enhancements right there. So we're, we know that it's a huge pain point for searching properties. So let me actually, let me just read this for you. Uh, word for word. So property search enhancements filtering. A filtering feature is what we're working on, similar to the one that was developed for asset search, will be deployed for property search. This is a large project that will take up resources, but it's been a popular request from the community and we want to make search as good as possible. So this is a big one. A lot of people have been asking for it. It's not going to be everything that you've asked for, but it will be a step in a big step in the direction to enhance property search. The other one that I want to focus on here under property features, again, there's four or five items here under this category, but home addresses displayed on the map. So when you look at the map, there's some data on the map right now, and there's a lot of data that's not there. What we want to do is provide as much data to players as possible. So for instance, imagine being able to take a look at a neighborhood and say, wow, look at how many people have set this neighborhood as their home address. I think that's valuable information that tells you a lot of things about that neighborhood um, and, and may tell you other things about other neighborhoods, right? You'll be able to see, we're starting with this, but you'll be able to see who's or how many home addresses, for instance, are there? Properties that are set as home addresses, will that data will exist on the map. So that'll be additional visual data for you there. I think that's a big one. I'm very excited for that. Uh, it's particularly in when I'm searching for, or when players are searching for like, what neighborhood do I want to join? Whoa, look at this neighborhood. It's packed. A lot of home addresses here. I think that's the community I want to be at. Or you know what? I want to start fresh. I want to start where nobody has set their home address yet. And let's revive this neighborhood. And you can just quickly glance, see, check out a neighborhood and see who is displayed and how many home addresses are there displayed on the map. So that's huge. Next up, another category we're focused on this quarter is social features. Again, there's a couple things in here. The one I want to focus on is right here in the middle, tagging. What is tagging? It's exactly what it says. So right now in our in-game channels, chat channels. So for instance, I jump into, let's say general chat. If someone's in there and I reply to them, or I tag, there, there's no way for me to tag them. There's just isn't. So so conversations, you kind of have to keep chat open in order to, to talk to each other. Same with the activity feed. I can comment on your activity feed, um, but I can't tag anybody. I can't, uh, I have no way to let you know that I'm talking to you. So tagging is gonna come to in-game chat. And that means, for instance, I'll be able to say, hey, at YK2012 on a post in a channel, in general chat. Hey, what do you think of this? It will since he's tagged, it will ping him on his phone. Hey, you've been tagged. The same it works with like a Discord, for instance, or or Twitter or any other social uh, social media platform. Tagging is coming. You can imagine what this is going to do to in-game chat. It's going to make it alive. It's going to make it viable. It's going to make it uh, a place where you can more readily communicate with other players in-game chat because you can tag them now. Will be huge. I'm very much looking forward to that one. Then for the final category here, and again, this has a couple of items in here, and there's two that I want to focus on here, is miscellaneous. So these are items that they don't go in another category, but they're miscellaneous. They're things that we're working on. The first here is reviving Spud Wars. What is Spud Wars, you ask? 
Well, for those of you that are newer to the game or weren't around during Spud Wars, Spud Wars was a strategic event where neighborhoods competed against each other um, or teams competed against each other to build a different structures. And what you could do in Spud Wars is I got points, you, you know, your opponent got points for building structures, but you could build a cell tower that then wiped out those points and uh, the points for those structures within a certain radius. It was very strategic. It was, hey, which neighborhood can take over the city? Um, which neighborhood can take over this area? And it, it, it requires players to work together to be strategic. Um, so we're looking at reviving Spud Wars and the gamification of Spud Wars. We're looking to make this a repeatable event in the game. It will bring value to properties. It will bring value to neighborhoods. It will bring value and competition to working together. Um, and we want to do this on a regular basis. Most likely, this will happen in between seasons. So we'll have the season and then we'll have off seasons. And this should be a regular event once it's developed out here uh, in between seasons. So stay tuned for that. I personally am very excited. Think of risk in Upland. That's what we're doing. And it fits it so naturally. And for those that were around during Spud Wars, you know, it's an, it was an amazing event uh, and it was a lot of fun. So that is coming back. The other one that I want to focus on here is leaderboards under miscellaneous. So right now you've got to go outside of the app for most of our competition leaderboards. We want to keep that all inside. That's ideal. You might think to yourself, wait a minute, isn't that easy? Just put the leaderboard in the app. Well, it takes development. It's it's not as easy as one would think. It, it takes development. So that's something that we're focused on, bringing more leaderboards, more in-depth leaderboards into the app, directly in the game. So you never have to leave. You have more information at your fingertips. You can see where you stand uh, in X, Y, or Z competitions on any given day of any given month of any given season. Leaderboards, they're coming. Again, there's a lot here that we did not go over in each of these. These are just some of the highlights. It's not all the highlights. Uh, these are just ones that I personally wanted to pick out. So make sure you go over and read the entire roadmap for Q4. It's a good one, guys. Uh, there's a lot coming. It's a great time to be at Upland. It's an exciting time to be at Upland. I hope you guys can see that and can see how we're thinking and the direction that we're going here. Again, leave us some feedback as well. You can find the link to our feedback board right inside of this, this article here. But that does us for today, everybody. Thanks very much. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.